Israeli people? They hate Israeli people because of the covenant that God established in the Bible regarding that land. Uh, we must understand that the author of the Quran cannot be the same author of the Bible. Uh, the covenant is not with Ishmael. When I first read the Bible, the covenant was, was, was with Isaac. And it was an eternal covenant forever. So they want to prove that this is a fabrication, that the Bible has been fabricated by the Jews. That land has been given to the Muslims. Although the Quran itself says that the land does belong to Moses and his people, uh, yet that was changed later on. Uh, and uh, they uh, want to destroy the evidence of God. This is why when the jihadists win, uh, if we pull out, let's say, of uh, Lebanon, if Israel pulls out of Lebanon, you see them mustering throughout the streets in demonstrations. Why? Because this proves to them that the covenant Islam gave them that they will destroy the Jews is true. Mm -hmm. This is why when the Mujahideen wins in Afghanistan, as uh, the Americans helped them and gave them Stinger missiles to fight communist Russia. What happened? As soon as they won, jihad movement grew like a mushroom, like wildfire. Because this to them proved that Allah is true and the jihadist God is real. Uh, in fact, Sheikh Karadawi, the most prominent, one of the most prominent figures in the Muslim world, he says, لا تعادوا فلسطين إلا بالإسلام. That means we can never regain Palestine, that is Jerusalem, except by going back to Islam. Uh, we, we, we can never use secularism, we can never use socialism, we can never use communism, only via Islam will we bring Palestine back, which will give them the confidence that their faith is true. So it's confidence build up, if you will. In the Bible, however, we don't need this confidence build up because the elements of fulfillment in the Bible is tremendous. We have 8,352 verses of prophetic nature in the Bible. When I read the, the Word of God, the true Word of God, Pastor, I started to realizing, wow, just as Isaiah said, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Foretelling the end from the beginning. You don't have this aspect in Islam. So in essence, Satan wants to kind of parallel something. Uh -huh. And as you see it fulfilled, as you see the Muslims killing the Jews, ah, it's fulfilling a part of Islamic dogma. When you see the Antichrist even coming with seven-year covenant, do you know the Mahdi comes with a seven-year Covenant peace treaty. Mm -hmm. So in essence, there is evil and there is good. There is God and there is Satan. Tell us how you became a Christian. Uh, just what I am saying. I read the Bible. I was a terrorist. I planted a bomb in a bank. I wanted to kill Jews. I hated them. I was called a freedom fighter. When I changed my mind and I loved the Jewish people and I loved the Americans and I took my racism away, now I was being labeled as a racist. I read the Bible in 1993 and spent a year researching it because my wife asked me, where are the corruptions in the Bible? I was going to convert her to Islam. Because as Muslims, we believe the Jews corrupted the Bible. And as I started studying it, I ran into thousands of verses which spoke in our time. I started understanding from the Bible that we have two roadmaps. One road map that is set by the United Nations and one road map that is set by God in the Bible. Everything was foretold. I lived in Israel. I saw our battles in several battles, whether it's, whether it's the Six Day War, whether it's the Yom Kippur War, whether it's the 1948 War, us just trying to destroy Israel so many times. When I read the Bible, I saw that I was in collision course with God. I saw that I was in collision course with a Christian theology because Islam denies the Trinity. Islam denies the crucifixion. Islam, Islam denies the deity of Jesus. And when I read the Bible in 1 John 2.22, who is the liar? He who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. So the essence of Antichrist or the spirit of Antichrist was in the Islamic dogma. When I realized I was in a collision course with the God of the Bible, I prayed to the God of the Bible. I prayed in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Show me the truth. If you make this prayer, you've dialed the right number. And I dialed the right number and he showed me all these evidences. It was overwhelming. I had to make an investment and the Bible it was the best investment. The Bible is the best investment. The truth in the Bible is the best investment any man can make. 
Is this the Bible you bought? Yes, sir. It's the Bible. Let me show it to the people. This is the Bible, and you paid, what, $10 for it? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. <laughs> and this Bible and the truth in it changed his life, and it will change your life. The people who have a Bible that's falling apart have a life that's not. You need to know what's in this book. I'd like to ask you this question. The Israelis and Hezbollah have just finished a 34-day war in Lebanon. There is now what I call a shaky ceasefire. Where do you see this conflict going? Uh, I see Hezbollah accepting a cessation of hostilities, as Condoleezza Rice states it. Uh, yet, as I mentioned before, that this is a, what Islam calls hudna. Uh, the, the Palestinians will sign peace treaties with Israel. That's not a problem. It is permissible to sign a peace treaty with the enemy. And they are regaining strength. The United Nations clearly says that they will not disarm Hezbollah. So Hezbollah is going to continue to be armed. They will have more smarter missiles. It won't be Katyusha rockets next time. It will be missile-guided missiles that will even hit uh, the Knesset, if you will. Uh, they are collaborating with Iran. They are an Iranian government. Israel is not at war with Hezbollah. Israel is in war with Iran. Iran is the source of the war. Iran is taking over Iraq. Uh, the Shia government there is very clear. They are pro-Iran. Uh, Iran is controlling Syria. Uh, the Alawite government there uh, is definitely pro-Iranian uh, revolution. Uh, so as I see it happen, Iran will take over Iraq, and eventually we see Islamic fundamentalism growing all the way to Turkey. Turkey will turn Muslim fundamentalists. This is the second largest army in NATO. When this happens, uh, America will not be able to fight on all these fronts. America will, will, will be forced to use its nuclear missiles. So you see a nuclear war developing because some nations in the Middle East have it. Iran is striving to get it. Do you believe that the president of Iran, Ahmadinejad, will use nuclear weapons against Israel if and when he gets them? Absolutely. This is his goal. He made it very clearly. He, made it, he said it literally. Uh, he wants to destroy Israel. And not just Ahmadinejad is the problem, but also a country like Pakistan. Musharraf, I know he's an ally of the United States, but he plays in both parts of the fence, of course. If he's ousted out, they already have a nuclear. So uh, it is much bigger than what Americans think. It's not just a war in Iraq. It's a war in Iraq, a war in Iran, a war in Sudan, a war potentially in Pakistan and potentially in Turkey. This is a war that the American people do not see. This is a war that Walid sees coming, and all America must see it. I thank you for watching the telecast. Thank you for being a part of this, and Walid, thank you. All right. God bless you. Thank, thank you for coming.